and a good God Thursday to you. How are you today? Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Sing with me. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Again, a good God Thursday to you. How are you all doing today? I hope you're doing well. Well, we've got a lot to talk about today. You know, Fridays are usually our review days, but Friday is not going to be a review day because so much has happened as we follow the account of Jesus being crucified. So tomorrow, you you got to listen today, pay attention today. We might get a little review in tomorrow, but I'm just let, letting you know, be ready, be ready, be ready. My name is Miss Karen Fletcher. How do you do? My name is Miss Karen Fletcher. How do you do? We are so glad, so very glad to see you. How do you do? What's your name? How do you do? And what's your name? How do you do? We are so glad, so very glad to see you. How do you do? How do you do? I am so glad to see everybody. I saw Frederica and her crew, MJ. Hey, how are you? Uh, there's Erica and Ivana, Serena with um, Naomi. I'm going from the youngest to the oldest, I think. Naomi, Sine, and Aiden. I see Sanaya. How are you? So glad to see you. Did I say Frederica and her crew? Yes, they are there. I'm, I'm sure Charlotte is going to be here and Danielle and Messiah. And just so glad. Well, it is time for us to get into our lesson make sure you tell your parents to share this with your friends okay make sure you let them know that they can get a bible class monday through friday from one o'clock till about 1 30 right here all right it's time for us to pray dear Heavenly father i thank you because you are so gracious towards us you love us so much you give us what we need you are right here with us you never leave us you are a constant companion lord because we dwell in your secret place and god as we continue to learn about your love for us jesus loves for us i pray that we grow in that bless our lesson or bless us as we learn our lesson in Jesus name amen all right we also see Charlotte and I said Kimberly okay so our lesson today this is all I want you all to pay attention this is all taking place everything I'm talking about is taking place within maybe 24 hours but we have not covered 24 hours yet we are still kind of in the dark going into the light so jesus remember he had the last supper with the disciples and he washed their feet and he told them to serve others to be humble and serve others he told judas to leave because he knew judas was going to betray him judas was going to tell the enemy where Jesus and the disciples were going to go. Because most people did not know that Jesus and the disciples went off into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. They didn't know when he did things like that, but Judas did. So he went and he was about, he went to betray Jesus. Um, what else happened? 
He told them to serve one another and um, uh, Peter said that he's not going to deny Jesus. He says, I'll follow you. I'm going to follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said, before the cock crows, you're going to deny me. And that means to say, I don't know you. I don't know who you are. Jesus said Peter was going to do it three times. Then they went, when they went in the garden to pray, uh, Jesus went the farthest into the garden. He came back looking at Peter, James, and John, and they were asleep. And then finally he told them, come on, let's go. And he saw Judas. Judas had told the chief priest and the scribes, he said, the one I kiss is the one you want. They went, he, he, Judas went, he kissed Jesus, and uh, they said, you know, you're the one I want. They took Jesus. Before they took Jesus, Peter, Peter's a little vigilant. He cut this man's ear off, <laughs> and Jesus put the ear back on. He's like, no, 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 you don't. That's not how we're going to do this. It is time for, this is my assignment. This is the assignment God wants me to do. And so they took Jesus away. All right. And so that is where we are right now. They took Jesus away. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And the chief, chief priests and the scribes, they took Jesus away. So now we're going to go to, I think it's Mark. Oh, I went to it, I think, in my Bible here. I was going to go here, but let's go here. And am I at the right place? Gethsemane. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, so we're in Matthew 26. And... I don't, I don't think that's the one I want to use because it's in the Gospels. and It's in all four of the Gospels. I think I'm supposed to be in Mark. I have to check my notes. Yes. No, I'm right. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. And we're going to start at verse 20, uh, 69. Matthew 26, verse 69. So they took Jesus. And they they were taking him. They took him to the to the to the council. And in verse sixty nine, it says Peter was sitting outside the courtyard because they were taking him to different courts, and they were going to find him guilty anyway. But they were trying to, you know, do you deny that this is what who you is this who you say you are? They say you're Jesus, and they say that you're trying to be God. And, you know, they were taking him to these different courts and. No matter what they said, he, they were going to find him guilty because they did not like Jesus. So they were taking him to this court and Peter was in the courtyard. And a servant girl came over and said to him, you're one of those Jesus. You're one of those who was with Jesus, the Galilean. But Peter denied it in front of everyone. First deny. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. That's the first time he denied Jesus. Later, out by the gate, another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around, this man is with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it, this time with an oath. I don't even know the man, he said. Two times, Jesus is, they're taking Jesus in these courts and they're, they're giving him a trial. They were not fair in this trial, but they were giving him a trial in different courts. He went to the he went to the council, and then he went to see uh, he went to see Caiaphas, and he went to see a few people, and then later, a little later, some other bystanders came to Peter and said, "You must be one of them. We can tell by your Galilean accent." So he spoke a certain way, and Peter. He started swearing. He said, 
a, a curse on me if I'm lying. I don't even know the man. And he started cursing. And guess what happened the third time? He said, I don't even know the man. The rooster. Do, 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 do. The rooster crowed. Oh my goodness. Peter, in one of the in one of the gospels, it said, Peter looked at Jesus. He could see him. And Jesus looked at him. But in all of the gospels, it says, when Peter heard the rooster, he remembered that he said, I will not deny you. And he ran away and wept bitterly. He felt so bad that he denied Jesus three times. But Jesus knows. Jesus knows what we're going to do. Jesus knew he was going to do that. He went away and he wept bitterly. So Peter denies Jesus three times, just like Jesus said he was going to do. So now remember the, the Last Supper. Now at daybreak, they take him to the high council. And in Matthew 27, we'll go to verse 11. Matthew 27, we'll start at verse 11. Jesus was standing before Pilate, the Roman governor. And Pilate said, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus replied, you have said it. But when the leading priests and the elders made their accusations against him, Jesus remained silent. Jesus didn't say anything when he was in front of the high priests and the scribes and all of them. And so um, Pilate said, don't you hear all these charges they're bringing against you? But Jesus made no response to any of the charges, much to the governor's surprise. Now, it was the governor's custom each year during the Passover celebration to release one prisoner to the crowd, anyone they wanted. And so, this year, there was a notorious, notorious, a very, I feel like somebody else right now, very, very bad <laughs> prisoner. He was a horrible, he was horrible. And his name was Barabbas. And so, um, that's who were they, they were considering, that's who he was considering releasing. As the crowds gathered before Pilate's house that morning, he asked them, which do you want me to release, Barabbas or Jesus, who was called Messiah? He knew very little. He knew very well that the religious leaders had arrested Jesus out of envy. Then... As Pilate was sitting at the judgment seat. Now, he's sitting there. Which one do you want? Do you want Barabbas or do you want Jesus, the one they call Messiah? His wife walks in. And his wife tells him, leaves a message. Leave that innocent man alone. She said, I suffered through a terrible nightmare about him last night. So in her sleep. In her sleep, she was being, uh, she had a nightmare. She said she had a nightmare about the innocence of Jesus and what they're about to do to him. And she was telling her husband, uh-uh, you don't, don't, don't you get involved in this. Meanwhile, the leading priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. Can you believe it? Jesus was innocent. How many sins did Jesus do? We can actually count them. Well, really, we can't count them because he did none. He did zero. Jesus did no sins. So they were going to crucify him for doing no wrong, but they did not like him. No, they did not like him. So the crowd is screaming, Barabbas, Barabbas. They wanted Barabbas. Then uh, Pilate responded, then what should I do with Jesus who was called the Messiah? And do you know what these people said? Crucify him, crucify. When you crucify someone, you put them on a cross. This is not a wide shot, but you put them on a cross they put nails in their feet. They put nails in their hand. They're hanging on a cross. And they're screaming, 
crucify him, crucify him. And Pilate says, why? What crime has he done? And the, map, the mob just got louder and louder and louder and louder. They wanted to put Jesus to death. Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing. So he sent for a bowl of water. Now, I have to do this. He sent for a bowl of water. So they bought him a bowl of water. He washed his hands. He washed his hands and then he said, Um... I am innocent of this man's blood. I am innocent of this man's blood. I am not guilty for putting this man to death. That's what he said. The responsibility is yours. And all these Jewish leaders are out there and people, Jewish leaders and people. And do you know what the people yell back? We will take responsibility for his death. We and our children. They did not know what they were talking about. They told them, okay, you don't have to be responsible for putting Jesus to death. We'll be responsible for putting Jesus to death. That's a whole lot of nerve. That's a whole lot of nerve. So Pilate released Barabbas to them and he ordered Jesus to be flogged with a lead tip whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Lead tip whip. Let me tell you what a lead tip whip is. It was described as a cat of nine tails. So it, it was a strap. It was a leather strap. Mm, mm, mm. With glass in each. With with um, 12 straps. It, it was bounded together. And then it had 12 little strips hanging from it. And on each strip was metal and glass and rocks. And guess what? They whipped Jesus with that. And it just, it just ripped his skin. It ripped him. And he just bled, bled, bled. And they, they whipped him so that people didn't, you couldn't even recognize that it was Jesus. And why did he do that? Why did he take all of that? For us. For, for me. And for you. And for everybody that was born into this world. Because we were born sinners. And he knew that, woo <laughs> He knew that nothing could get us back to God. Except the blood, of his blood. And so he sacrificed his life for us. That's what Jesus did. So he let them whip him. Oh my goodness. They whipped him. And um, before I go any farther. Okay. So they whipped him. Now what I didn't tell you. And then. We, oh no. I'll tell you that part tomorrow. So they whipped him. So Jesus did all of this. Now it's morning time. So we went from. From the dinner that night, now it's morning time. It's early in the morning. Early, early. All right, so that's what happened to Jesus so far in our lesson. In our lesson. And he did all of that because he loved us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You just need to say thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Man, man, man. Thank you, Jesus, loving me <laughs> all right well our song let's go to our song our song and we will learn the second verse yesterday that's where we're going right now you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Remember that? That's the part we learned yesterday. So, you came from heaven to earth to show the way. Remember that? Let me hear you go. Ready, set, go. You. And 
And then the next part, from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. Your turn. Oh, okay. I'll give you the from. Your turn. From And then you say, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. So let's sing the whole second part. You came from heaven to earth. To show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Sing it with me, come on. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. One more time. You came, you came. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Let's sing the whole part. Ooh, this is going to be too long. Lord, I lift your name. So I've got to raise this. See, that's why I need this little somebody with a keyboard right here. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I will sing that okay that's going to be our song we're going to be a big choir you know i i direct the children's choir at my church at lifeline and so this is a song that we were going to sing tomorrow for easter on resurrection sunday this song right here so we're just going to sing it tomorrow lifeline yep those of you who are here and then the extras, we're going to be singing that tomorrow. All right. We've got to move right along because the time is going real fast. Because this part of Jesus' life is just so exciting. All right. Our, our memory verse is uh, verse number 6 of Psalm 91. Nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. You all remember that? nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the arrow, no, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. I have to say that with the other part. I have to say it with verse 5. <laughs> okay, so verse 5 goes, Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. All right? So we'll say it. Oh, my son gave me a little beat. Let me see if I can pull it up. Because he was like, Ma, you're doing okay, but uh, let me see if I can do it. We'll see. I think you all can hear it. And he calls it Mama's Music. <laughs> okay. We're going to start with number five, and it's Thou Shall Not 
be afraid. You ready? Here we go. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. All right, so we're gonna do all five verses right now. Are you ready? All six verses right now. Are you ready? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He will cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrow by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that waiteth noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Amen. Amen. Okay, I went farther. He wants to keep going. He's a little fast. He's a little fast. But anyway, that's our memory verse. We'll go over that again tomorrow. And it is time for us. <laughs> it is time for us to do our closing, whatever we're going to do. What are we about to do? What are we about to do? What are we about to do? Father Abraham. Ooh. Sanaya, you were ready for that one. Oh my gosh. Father Abraham. All right. We'll do Father Abraham. Are you all ready? <clears throat> Here we go. Father Abraham has many sons. Many sons has Father Abraham. I am one of them. And so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right hand, Father Abraham has many sons. Many sons has Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right hand, left hand, Father Abraham has many sons. Many sons has Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right hand, left hand, right foot. Father Abraham has many sons. Many sons has Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot. Father Abraham has many sons. Many sons has Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot, chin up. Father Abraham has many sons. Many sons has Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot, chin up, turn around, sit down. All right, it has been my pleasure. It's been my pleasure being with you today. God bless you. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. 
with everybody here today. I thank you. Lord, I thank you for Jesus too. I thank you for the reminder as we study your word of the